Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one Nolly, and today we're going to be playing some Dragon Blaze. And Season 5 is here. About time. We've all been talking about it. Well, mostly I've been talking about it. So, first things first, we're going to have to look through like the patch notes and everything. Because I didn't look at them on like the opening stream where I started playing it. I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to glance at some things. And just basically tell you in a nutshell what it is. So let's get to number one. Number one is basically completing everything in chapter four up to Myth unlocks the, um, chapter five. So yeah, you have to be a Myth to unlock Archangel. So you got to go through it a few times, you know? All right, new region, new monsters, all essence drops inside of there and new equipment. I can't wait for these to be removed in the future. Uh, then. The max level cap has been changed to 123. All your main characters are transcended. You guys have already known that. Um, there are no longer any quests to become transcended. And awakened quests have been removed. We never had transcended, I think. Or unless they're talking about um, Death Crown. Hmm. All right. Jar of Growth will be removed from the game. So you guys have missed out on that if you guys haven't touched on it. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll come back in the future though. Next is you can create a new character and that means one new character and get it to level 120 automatically. Enhanced skills for transcending. So this is going to be a little bit weird for you guys. So, I will, no, I'll explain it right now. Uh, what character can I use for this? Let's go with, let's go with my archer. Because I haven't put the skills on her yet. Alright, so this is going to be confusing to others. But, technically, right now, you have all of your skills unlocked. You just have to enhance them. So, right now, you're at rank 1. And you can only transcend one of these skills. So the one I will transcend is Reign of Arrows. Now it's at rank 2. I'll put it in there again. It's transcended. Now that this is transcended, I can only choose one of these to ultimate. So it's pretty much you have one skill normal. You have one skill ultimate. And you have one skill transcended. It's pretty much how that goes. Uh, I'm going to pick, eh, why not, we'll pick focus. And there we go. Can't pick anything else here because everything else is locked. That's pretty much how that goes. Normal, ultimate, transcendent. As for this passive, that's pretty much the same thing. You guys gotta try and choose something for that as well. Um, as for this, I would probably go crit damage if anything, so... That could be a thing. And now I gotta choose something else. I'm gonna go with boss damage. Because the dex right here is pretty decent anyway. Um, the crit damage and everything is gonna be real nice, especially if you have like really good gear for your DPS. I definitely recommend you grab it. Now I'm going to go back to my um, beautiful encanter and we're going to get T1. Alright, so character status changes. Strength, dex, and intelligence will only increase in attack and no longer increase defense, evasion, or accuracy. That's unfortunate. But defense, evasion, and accuracy will be converted to stats based on on the allies characteristics and they would be increased based on your um, level hmm so that means basically your jewels you can no longer like fully think those through anymore you just gotta place it on the right ones and they just increase their attack now that's pretty much all that's useful about the jewels is that they increase attack that's it all right the request system this is pretty much getting XP for your um, main character. So basically to get these scrolls, you have to do the 
request dungeon, which you can buy your way into. I do not stress this enough that you probably have to do this every single day just to enhance your characters. So make sure you have enough rubies to actually keep doing that over and over. All right, next. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much your rewards you get from each of the um, requests. All right, and you got the new main character, which I'm pretty sure most of you guys have looked at. I don't know if I want to look through all this because there's quite a lot to go through. But I'm going to let you guys glance at that. All right, main character costume system change. You can still equip Awakened costumes to your Transcended and both appearances apply. Regular costumes will only reflect stats, not appearance, which really sucks because there are a few costumes that are really nice. Due to Transcended's character being unable to equip Buster Keys, any related Buster costumes will be converted into character stats. So that's pretty nice since there aren't like that 20% like buff anymore, buff to keys. Damage system adjusted. Attack and damage calculations have been adjusted. Uh, I don't, well, they don't really tell us how much has been adjusted. So it could be a nerf or it could be a buff, whichever one. When somebody says adjusted, I'm pretty sure that means n nerfed. Most of the time, not at a 10, it means nerf, but it could have been buffed a little bit. Who knows? Alright, buff stacks. Pretty much you don't have buffs like all over the place anymore. Like the wall of buffs you would see, they now stack in numbers now. So that's pretty nice. Alright, next is evasion and accuracy adjustments. Current attack success rate equals defender's evasion. And now the new one is basically it goes off your attacker's accuracy versus the defender's evasion so yeah that one's a little bit meh all right battle visuality improved so you have like a lot more room to see your characters and actually see them fight attack speed adjusted for main characters and allies okay huh all right number 13 attack system improved Introducing aggro. Oh no. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Anybody who's doing like the most damage out of your squad is probably going to get focused. Which I do not like. Why is aggro a thing? Aggro is determined by hit rate from formation plus the highest damage dealt. During the fight, primary targets will be the enemy unit with the highest aggro. So that, that's going to be quite annoying. Next is balance changes. Stat increase adjusted. Uh, so this is basically dealing with um, your crit damage and your crit rate and your defense. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be a nerf. It could be. Who knows? But here are a few other things you guys can read up on that. Like I said, I was going to read all of it. Number 15. Artifacts removed. They will no longer drop from this boss, which pretty much where everybody went just to get theirs. So there really isn't a point of artifacts anymore just because um, we can no longer use our keys on our main character. So, you know, it's kind of running towards keys being removed anyway. So there's really no need for artifacts right now. All right, ally effects, passives that help you inside of your um, battles. We've already talked about this a little bit, like a few days ago. This was pretty straightforward. If you grab Death Crown, Mercedes, and King Graham, you get this buff. If you grab these characters, you get this buff. If you grab this character, you get this buff. Now, no, you don't select uh, like a one you want to go with. You get all of them, and they go on at the same time. So let's say if I ultimate this whole team right here, I get 100% normal damage. Along with, if I ultimate these guys, I also get, I would get a stamina increase by 50%. So, yeah, it's pretty helpful. I do recommend you guys get all of them you can. Definitely recommend it. 
cost reduction to create trans. All right, 17 cost reduction to create trans. So that means we're going to be paying less money to make these Zam things. Number of deified units required has been changed to one instead of three. So let's take a look at that. So now to create a key, let's go all the way down here. Uh, who can I create? <laughs> I don't think I have one of them that is ultimate right now. Actually, I do. So basically, I can create this key right off the bat now. I don't need three. I can only use one. Uh, as for right here, one of these guys will suffice. And you can just pretty much straight up make it. Which is actually pretty nice. And I can also make this as well. So it's an easier way of like getting your keys and everything, so I definitely recommend you guys do that. Uh, because keys will disappear soon, but they will still give us rewards for collecting those keys and getting them all to ultimate. So I definitely recommend you guys do that. Now let's go back to where we were. And also, number of essence required to enhance transcendent allies have been reduced. Alright, now we're going to go to 18, the new transcendent allies. Atlas and Tevis, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that, I do apologize if I butchered that, but yeah, these two have been released, Atlas I'm pretty sure is going to be quite the monster in the future, considering she's supposed to get a buff, maybe she, this is her buff version, uh, we'll have to see, wow this is going to be a long video now that I think about it, and yeah, we're not even into the story of chapter 5 yet. But we'll get there in the next video. <laughs> we will get there. As of right now, we're just going to display the whole, like, update. This video. Atlas normal attacks deal extra fixed damage. Andromeda Nuke Punch is the first skill, and it inflicts massive amounts of damage and sends a target airborne. So, yeah. There's a 100% chance of they will fly. Yeah, that, that's quite an issue. So, one punch, Atlas is back. Oh God, what a nightmare. So, sometimes you guys did not notice, especially new players. Atlas would basically punch a person out of play. So, if you only have one character in your team in PvP versus an Atlas, she's pretty much going to automatically win because she knocked your unit out of play. That unit no longer exists. That's basically what she was made for. She, even if you had like a whole party, she's going to punch one of them out of play. Then it'll be a 4v5 at the beginning. That, that's why Atlas was such a monster in PvP and why she was so ignoring to like fight against. So I might be making her sooner or later just for my PvP team, you know, just uh, be that guy who has her. So this skill cannot be resisted as well, because it's not actually a debuff, even though they say it is. It's just like a physical thing actually happening to you instead of like stunning you. You could be immune to a stun, you know, hit upside the head is just like doesn't affect you at all. But you can't be immune to getting airborne into the sky. So, yeah. Inflicts double damage onto boss units. So, so yeah, that's pretty a good skill. His cooldown scares me a little bit because, you know, that cooldown is pretty low. So, a lot of people are going to be getting knocked out of play. Unless that's, unless that's changed. I, I don't think it's been changed. I think it's still a thing. Alright, her second skill is Max of Eric. I mean, uh, Eruption. <clears throat> Inflicts massive damage after removing buffs on one unit and stunning them for 8 seconds. The stun effect cannot be removed. So yeah, you're going to be stunned for 8 seconds. Enjoy it. No matter what you want, you, you can't have it. Next is Devotion. For 8 seconds, attack is increased by 61%. Attack speed is increased by 175%. And counters all incoming damage from enemies and inflicts counter damage up to 167 damage crit hits. 
So it crits no matter what on a counter attacks and applies airborne debuff for three seconds. Enjoy. And freaking joy. So that, that's annoying. I really hope this isn't like a new punch that puts everybody out of play anymore. I'm just hoping he just lists them off the ground so they can't do anything. All right, let's get into the passives. Pyro Chamber. Every fourth hit of Atlas inflicts 828% damage on all enemies and applies the airborne debuff for three seconds. Yeah, this is pretty much the normal I'm in the sky one. Okay, so somebody will probably clarify that one for me. Because I don't know if they removed um, hitting out of play. But that's what she did back then. Normal attacks also remove one buff from an enemy. Her second passive, which is quite something to be feared, especially <laughs> Grey Soul users, and it's called Indomitable Will. And Insta Death skills have no effect on Atlas. So, yeah, you better get ready, all you Grey Soul users. When she enters the field, she is immune to all debuffs for 9 seconds. And she receives 15% less damage. This skill can only be used once when entering the field. So it's pretty much like uh, Winlu. When she enters the field, she can only turn invisible for that one like entrance. And that's it. Alright, her next passive is Spike. Which looks annoying even glancing at it. Let's see. Recovers HP by 30% of a damage inflict, so that's pretty much just life steal. Inflicts additional fixed damage by 350%, Jesus, of Atlas attack. Inflicts a massive amount of damage to one enemy that flew away and spikes them down into the ground. And it does. And that spike does a massive amount of damage to all other surrounding characters. So it's pretty much an AoE of one character getting its ass beat in the air, then smacked down just to add insult to injury to your rest of your teammates. <laughs> Alright, now the ultimate skill, Blazing Charge. Atlas attacks inflict splash damage to all surrounding enemies through a shockwave. Alright, not bad, not bad. Alright, next is Trans Tevis. I guess that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> and she's a priest and she inflicts damage to an entire party or recovers HP to all your allies. Her first skill is called Heavily Veil and damage inflicted on party heals HP. So that means your party is pretty much immune. Anytime an enemy attacks you, you get HP back for those 6 seconds. Next is God's Wrath. Inflicts massive amount of damage to all enemies. All enemies receive 20% more damage and prevents all enemies from healing. Which is actually pretty nice. I like that one. Alright, next skill is Divine Grace. God's blessing are given to all party members. Wait, what? What is God's blessing? Explain. I guess that's just telling you guys what it... Uh, I don't know. Full immunity is gain. And all enemy debuffs are reflected back at them. So she's pretty much saving you from all these debuffs. And she's pretty much healing you for all the attacks that your party is receiving. She's pretty nice. It's pretty retarded as well. Like, jeez. Each enhancement duration increases by 0 0.4 seconds. Huh. And can increase to... Okay, so that means a character enhancement. Each character enhancement actually increases the duration of this. Okay. And can increase to the max of 9 seconds. Well, that's actually... Pretty decent. Well, I like it. Alright, let's get into the passive. First passive is Merciful Heart and increases recovery by 80% and recovers all the party members' HP by 8% per second. That is that is nice. 
it's their max HP, by the way. So everybody gets their own like individual heals depending on how high their HP is. All right, Sacred Heart. Increase all party members' attack by 15% and their stamina by 47%. All right, next is Holy Blessing. Increase the melee damage of all party members by 15. When she uses Holy Veil skill, it increases attack damage by 38% and increase attack speed by 40%. So that's pretty nice. All right, next is our ultimate skill, Divine Light. Each time one of us is removed by an enemy, all party members' attack is increased by 28% and attack speed is increased by 17%. Skill cannot be dispelled. So does this stack? Because if this stacks, that's pretty insane, especially if you're removing a lot of her buffs. All right, next is when she uses Divine Grace, physical attack is increased by 43%. So this could be a great PvP character. Actually, no, scratch that, she is a great PvP character. Definitely a must have in my book. All right, next we have daily dungeons. You guys have already seen that. I've already talked about it. All of these dungeons you guys had to do, which is actually pretty nice. I gotta do most of these after this. Right now it's runes. But I'm going to buy my way into this and this because I've been increasing a lot of my stuff lately. And the engraving system is pretty much where you use all those runes. When you get the runes, you put them inside of here and it increases all the stats of that certain class. Alright, let's say if I wanted to increase my um, Bell Snow's like damage and everything and all of this enhancements. I would have to get those um, Encanter rune fragments. And I would put them in here. Then I'll put them in this. Then this is what I receive from all those. So the nice part is that the level does, like the rune does level. I don't think it caps out like anytime soon. But I'm pretty sure you can keep going and going. Maybe it'll cap out sooner or later. I, I don't know if it has a cap. If any of the Korean players know that, then just let me know. And the request system has been added. Also, if you guys want like a higher um, grade of request, you have to combine the scrolls together. Combine the requests together to get a higher tier. So you guys can keep going from level, from enhancement five. All right, equipment transfer system, which I was way off inside of that other video. It wasn't like transforming this into that. It was pretty much just taking the stats from this to that and increasing on this side. So you can keep whatever like stats you had on like a weapon back then because if you get like the best stats you you've always wanted and don't want to like try and grind for the next one you can basically keep them and just put the stats on to this instead but i'm pretty sure that costs rubies so be careful next we have new jewels and new jewels as in we now have sun jewels the coin shop, which I'm still not going to buy those. I'm pretty sure the moon jewels are still way better. So you, you can now combine those star jewels into moon jewels now. And plus you have an additional slot that you can add to your um, accessories as well. So that's a good thing. A few balance adjustments. Uh, so here's the thing I don't like. The adjustment to all this. Especially guild loot. Even freaking area one has taken us half of the day. Like this thing has been increased insanely. So I'm going to have to change um, how we do guild loot now. We're going to have to do it like. I, I got to figure out something because this is just massively been increased. You can no longer kill area one within seconds unless you have like everybody fighting. It doesn't really help that only two of us are actually doing it right now. There aren't like everybody else joining, which does suck because we do need the extra players helping. So that's pretty much like our own like guild adventure right there. Um, next is balance adjustments for ward bosses. I haven't really noticed anything different in there because I've been doing like really great inside of these um ward bosses now. Um, Guild Adventure has been adjusted, which does scare me a lot. <laughs> Next, um, this has been adjusted. I can only get to like 
I think, round six now. So, yeah, that has been increased a little bit. Tower should have never been touched if they've increased it. Do not touch Tower anymore, please. Tower is insane in and out of itself. If, unless you're going to nerf it, leave Tower alone. Don't ever increase it again, please. Please, don't. We don't need that. Alright, number of helpers have been reduced to 5 instead of 7. It's out of ROB, so... Yeah, man. That's that's quite the suffering. Alright, changes to tag match skill rules. Alright, tag skills used by your party members will not be cancelled when tagging in another like unit. So, basically, if you're trying to like... Huh, how do I explain that? So let's use invisibility as like a, I guess, example. So you put in the character, invisibility is going off, then you try to take them out just because you probably picked the wrong thing or you're trying to get, or somebody put like a invincibility against your invincibility, you're trying to take her out and, you know, start recharging it so you can be ready for like pretty much the next battle. There is no longer a chance of doing that. You have to wait until that skill is done. So basically when you take her out, that skill is going to keep going until it's done. Then when it's done, then it's going to start recharging to keep people from doing that. That's no longer a thing. Skills have been rebalanced as well inside of there. Guild battle and arena rewards have been adjusted. I hope not decreased and, you know, increased. I'm going to be sad if that's the case. Custom rewards from guild battle have been removed. Aw, oh, that's unfortunate. Along with um, the frame rewards have been removed. Alright, the UI and everything has been changed. Everything looks way different now. It used to look like this. Oh my god, to this. I don't like how the rupees look though. That I like how these rubies look. This one looks way more shiny. This one looks way more or less like... Eh... I don't know. I do like how the coins and tickets look. A little bit of the shoes as well. And I think I like these shoes better. I like the thumbs up. <laughs> but that's just my own personal opinion. Alright, Nobla... Alright, Nobla has been changed really nicely. And I do love this change for Nobla. Instead of killing the boss within seconds, you now have like... A time limit and basically you get 30 seconds to fight Nobla without killing it like automatically so that gives people a chance to get their score in especially those especially most of us who are able to kill Nobla within seconds and we know that other people don't get a chance to attack at all and get a score this pretty much saves it so it can give like the rightful person whoever does the most damage up until that point. Really hope they do that for um, Guild Siege, you know, instead of like killing it within seconds because Guild Siege does not last long at all. It needs to be like that, just how like, Nobla is. So this has been removed. This is basically mastering your um, allies that you get. New achievements have been added and when you, whenever you get a new ally for the first time, you automatically get those rupees instead of like having to max them out for the rupees. Next is the tender wars have been improved. No longer resets on the first of each month. So that pretty much means you can log in at any time. And I do mean at any time and get your rewards. So it's no longer like, oh no, I have to log in for 28 days this month. It's pretty much like just like that one reward train that you have to be on. So that's pretty much how that goes. All right, here goes a few other things that you guys can read over right now. I told you guys, I was gonna look over everything. I'm just gonna glance at it. You can automatically create uh, dual cards with your, with your deadly fire, which I really don't recommend doing, but you know, it's still there. That's an option for that. And now, the cap increase for gold has increased to 5 billion. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing. 
the whole new users everything and perks you guys have already known that uh the new jewels now for like summoning have been improved is now from here to here which is actually pretty nice and actually worth like actually putting your rubies into if you guys want to day weeklies have been changed to two allies instead of one all right daily has been changed from one essence selector to trends essence summoned uh that's pretty nice there's been a few changes to the pets and these are the purchase pets as well and this is from 10 to 15 and from 30 to 50 plus we have like a calendar improvement you guys can always see that you guys know how that goes you get one trans or 15 triple s allies along with 150 you know essence that's quite beautiful so yeah guys start logging in there's a reason to log in a massive reason to log in so you guys better be logging in all right they got some started events where all players receive their transfer that's not how you spell transcended but you know it's there no everybody makes typos so one whenever you log in through this duration uh pretty sure it ends like at the end of december so make sure to get all your buddies all your friends who are interested to try this game out in now before december ends so they can get two transcended allies which is pretty much the most powerful units in the game as of right now so you also have like a login that's going on right now uh login for 14 days and receive special rewards and at the end of those 14 days you receive um a transcended allies selector so yeah they're being really generous with these events right now so the cost right now has been decreased by 30 rubies i mean that's pretty reasonable you're saving a little bit on your rubies so i definitely recommend you abuse this event while you can especially if you want to save on rubies because when this event is over it's going to go back to being pretty high and you know we like to keep as many rubies as we can and plus returning user event you also get another one so you technically get four if you're a returning user so any returning users get get over here if you haven't logged in the 20 days or more 20 days jeez that's like way less than I expected but yeah if you haven't logged in 20 days or more come back to the game and get your trans essence I mean you don't have to stay you could just go ahead and grab them and leave again if you want to but there's a lot of content you know and then there's the new users special events yeah like yada yada that's pretty much it <laughs> so yeah that's all that we have Let's see how we're doing inside of Guild Loot. And it's going terribly. Yeah, see, this is where I laugh, last stopped doing it, just to do this video. This place is insane now. You're gonna need all your guild members to be doing this. Especially those, um, like, mid to level to, uh, like, weaker guilds. You're definitely gonna need every, like, member to help you out into finishing this. I'm going to try and gather everyone so they can help us out and finish this today. Then I'm going to try and change it to like starting this up on either Wednesday or Thursday instead. So all of our lower players are going to have to be on a ball and attack every zone like way earlier than expected. Just because this is going to take forever to complete. So with that said guys, hope you all enjoyed the patch notes and everything going through. Till then. I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go do my dailies. Peace out.